Hi, I'm Dave Forsyth, and this is episode 11 of our video series, Avid Tips and Techniques. One of the coolest features to come into the Media Composer toolset over the last few years is motion tracking. It is mostly used to have a foreground element track the positional changes of a point of reference in the background. Here we have a shot of a model X-Wing fighter against a green screen. OK, I confess to being a total Star Wars nerd. Notice that there is a little bit of movement in the model to simulate flight. Well, the truth is, it's moving because I had it hanging on a microphone stand in front of a green screen in my backyard, and it was a little bit windy at the time. But it still kind of works, don't you think? At any rate, as you can see, there is no engine glow. This is what we are going to add, and then track the model. The final shot looks like this. What motion tracking really needs most is something to track. This is in the form of a small group of pixels, which are quite different from the surrounding pixels. The more different those pixels are, the more easily they can be tracked. In this example, I've placed a small white dot in the back of each engine. They really stand out quite nicely from the black background and should be easily tracked. My foreground engine glow has been created using an Avid Paint effect, which you will find in the image category of the Media Composer effect palette. And yes, I could have done it in Photoshop too, but in this series, I'm not using any third-party applications at all. Everything you see is done right inside the Avid. First, we need to create the basic layering. The model shot is already on video 2 with a spectromat effect to key it over the background. I will now take the paint effect which I created earlier and auto nest it over the top of the spectromat. Auto nesting means that the paint effect just goes over the top of the spectromat and doesn't replace it. But if you want to know all about auto nesting, then the MC110 Introduction to Media Composer Effects course is for you. The glows are already in the right place for the first frame, but as I drag through the composite, you can see that they stay in place while the background moves. So I need to set up the motion tracking so the engine glows track the white dots. If this were a simple linear move, then one tracker would be enough. But because the model is moving around in the frame and rotating slightly too, I need to set up two trackers. This will track two reference points as they move not only in the frame, but also relative to each other. I have decided to track the engines in the top left and bottom right. This gives me good vertical and horizontal tracking references, as well as tracking the slight rotation in the model which does occur from time to time. To begin, I have to park on the first frame of the effect. Then I will select the four engine glows and choose Object Group. This groups the glows together, which means that they will all be treated as a single unit. Next I open the Tracking Parameter Group and click the T1 button. This simultaneously opens the tracking tool and adds the first tracker to the image in the preview window. It is this tracker that I need to place on the point of reference. But first, I will zoom in to see more detail by using the Enlarge tool. I can then drag the tracker so its centre is right on the white dot. You can see the tracking area is quite large, which will usually be fine. But I will resize the inner region and be very specific about the pixels I want tracked. Besides, the smaller the target pixel area is, the more quickly tracking data will be generated. Once I have set up the first tracker, I will create my second tracker. I will place this tracker over the white dot in the engine at the lower right. Now my two trackers are in place, I will hit the Start Tracking button and the system will then start generating the tracking data for the effect.
Once it is finished, I can then dismiss the tracking tool, which will restore my engine glows, go back to the first frame of the effect, and play it. Now even though this is a non-real-time effect, I will still get a preview in effect mode. The speed of the preview depends very much on the processing speed of the system that you're working on. If I'm satisfied with the tracking, I can then render the effect so I can play it in real time. What you have seen in this session is covered in more detail in the SN340 Finishing on Avid Symphony Nitrous, MC110 Introduction to Media Composer Effects, and the MC305 Advanced Media Composer Effects courses. You can get more information on our many Avid training courses at www.avap.com.au or you can contact me directly by email at dforsyth at ambertech.com.au Well, I hope you've enjoyed the session. Until next time, I'm Dave Forsyth. Cheers for now.